So, Prime Minister's questions continues. We're going to leave it there for the moment. If anything dramatic comes up, we will, of course, return. Um, let me bring in my guest for this part of the show, uh, Mims Davis for the Conservatives and Employment Minister. Hello to you, Luke Pollard for Labour, Shadow Environment Secretary, and of course, Laura Koonsberg, the BBC's political editor, is still here with us. Just before I open up the discussion, just to say that as Laura had already mentioned, the Prime Minister confirmed that at six o'clock this evening, there will be a national clap for Captain Sir Tom Moore and everything he did and represented and for all the money and morale he raised in his last year of life. Um, Laura, uh, Keir Starmer uh, went on the issue of borders and hotel quarantining. Now this has been a theme for the last few days. Are they making headway? Well, it depends how you look at it. So we know now that on the 21st of January, the Government Scientific Committee discussed this issue mm. and whether or not the UK shouldn't just be restricting travel into the country. What they should be doing is if anybody comes in from somewhere at risk, they should then be forced to go straight to a hotel rather than just promising to isolate. Now, we know that Sage said at that meeting, the only way to completely be sure about any variants would not be coming into the country would be to have a sort of complete quarantine thing, to have a complete ban from, sorry, not quarantine, to have a complete ban of people coming in from basically every other country. But it wasn't until the 27th of January that the government then finally agreed on there to quarantine people coming in. And it's the 3rd of February, and even that policy still hasn't come in. So there's a lot of toing and froing on this, which I'm sure our viewers have been following because it's been going on for a long time. But Labour believes that the government is still vulnerable on this issue because there are still 20,000 people coming into the country mm. from different places and there still isn't a date for when that hotel quarantine policy is actually meant to come in and it may well not be for another couple of weeks so as one Tory MP suggested the heating might be cranked up to full on you know the vaccine programs going at great guns but the window's still open because there's still a gap here where people could be coming in from other parts of the world right well Mims what's the problem what's taking so long ah Mims we can't hear you at the moment you may have muted yourself accidentally um, let's try you again. What's sorry, taking... sorry, Joe. You're with the us. perils of the mute. It's all Apologies. right. It is a hazard um, of uh, being virtual. Yes. What is the problem? What's the delay? Why isn't this in place right now? Well, my understanding is that we're in the process of the, the procurement and the practicalities and making this feasible. But to say that, you know, you can just sort of randomly come into the UK and do exactly what you want is simply not the case. And of course, at SAGE, various scenarios and papers are put forward are mm. not part of those conversations. And of course, what's practical and feasible ha needs to be looked at. And of course, we need to balance the. And obviously, I've got Gatwick Airport in, in my patch. So we We've got to balance the need of freight, uh, wider border and business issues. But of course, you can't simply go on holiday. And I thank many of my constituents as well who've been in contact with me, who've been desperately keen to go and see sick sure. and ill loved ones around the globe. Okay. You simply just see it as impossible. Right. Okay. And well, let's we have do a look. know that the police will be tracking you mm. when you come into the UK, that you will have to explain why you're coming uh, into we the understand. UK. You will need we, that paperwork, okay, you will need that test and that clear test. Right. Uh, and of course, the next stage of this, uh, covering all of the, the red zone, will We'll look forward to in terms of those um, hotels and the procurement around it. All right. But people know you can't just simply wander around the UK and not adhere to quarantine. Right. And but this our force is, is tracking people. Mims, this is about mm. degrees, isn't it? We know we've had the policy outlined to us, but as we sit here today, it's still not in place, that hotel quarantine policy. And when we talk about the threat posed by the new variants, whether homegrown or coming from abroad, um, they may be resistant to the vaccines. Why isn't the government putting in place measures for all UK arrivals to quarantine in hotels right now if the variants are the biggest threat to us opening up again? Well, we have got the interventions around postcoding and tracking those specific variants around door to door testing and the additional understanding of community transmission. And I, and I know how baffling this has been. And it's absolutely brilliant that it's our scientists that have uncovered what's been going on, because, you know, earlier in December, we were in a lower tier here and simply couldn't understand why, despite everyone taking the right precautions and listening, but of course, right next door to Kent, what was actually going on. So we 
we are always making sure that we update the guidance. You're right, there's still further work to do in terms of procuring those hotels and what happens when people come into the UK. Yeah. Going on holiday is legal. You must do that passenger location form. The police are doing more um, approaches at the borders as well, reminding people. And I'm personally really pleased that we're dealing with the influencers and people, frankly, going on holiday and flouting this because I think this has wound people up something chronic. And I'm glad that the Home Secretary has taken this on as well. All right, Laura. But, Mims, if, as you say, Gatwick's in your constituency, there must, as well as many people worried about their jobs at Gatwick Airport, there must be many, 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 many hotel rooms that are currently empty because there has been such a downturn in the travel industry. Why is it so difficult for the government to actually block book hotel rooms around the country to do everything that we possibly can to close down our borders to dangerous variants that might be coming in for other countries? Yeah, and we recognise the, the Brazil issue, the uh, the Portuguese issue, and hence the, the red zones. My understanding is those conversations are ongoing. I can't praise Gatwick uh, broad enough. They've been absolutely brilliant in terms of, you know, balancing the fact that they would love to stay open, but the fact that they, there is public health concerns. They're setting up new job centres there. Uh, they um, have been part of the testing regime. But, on this, sure but, but, but Minister, on this specific point, but Minister, on this specific point, you know, ministers and officials were talking about this policy for weeks before a final decision was actually taken. A final decision was taken to do it on the 27th of January. We're now then another week on, on the 3rd of February, and it's still not happened. I mean, the government's Look, grappled with so many complicated things during this pandemic. Some have gone well, some have gone less well. Why does booking hotel rooms seem to just be stumping the government? Yeah, and I'm as keen as you to, to see this because those people coming through Gatwick, for example, directly affect my constituency. My understanding is this is being refined. What is feasible? How we balance the trade business and also the uh, necess necessity of having borders open to, for food, for, for other transits is being worked out. Obviously, this sits with um, uh, DFT and also PHE. And as you hear with SAGE, I don't think we're very far away. Of course, it's a priority. But the message is clear for people. Going on holiday is illegal. You must take that pre-test before you return. You must quarantine. Yep. There'll be additional police at Gatwick Airport or any other airport. And you will be visited by border force and you should be isolating. And this should have been going on all, right. all the time coming from those red zones. OK, Mims, Luke, you, you've been sitting patiently listening to all of this. There is an issue and a difference between what is practical and realistic and whether it would make a real difference when it comes to the Variants. Let's just test what Labour is actually proposing. You want a comprehensive hotel quarantine system. It would apply to all UK arrivals, not just those coming from this red list of countries. But there would be exceptions. So haulage is one exception. We heard from your Shadow Home Secretary. Any others? Well, I think the general public will be bemused by what we've just heard and the fact that when we're looking at a crisis uh, of this scale that our borders are still open and when we can see uh, countries like Australia, New Zealand that have made real progress as island nations in limiting uh, 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 transport uh, travel to that country mm. and then having proper quarantine measures when they get there then I think we w the delay is simply unacceptable. We've got the deepest uh, recession of any industrialised country and one of the highest death tolls and the lesson for me surely from the pandemic is to act faster, yeah. act bolder and act quicker and that's not what well, sadly, we're seeing from this. Of course, there will be, uh, there should be a certain number of exceptions to, uh, to and what that. what are they? Uh, well, you, you've mentioned haulage. I don't have all that, that full list of exceptions in front of me at the moment. But the key thing is, is that at the moment, people are able to fly into the country and yeah. they're able to travel within there when actually we're making huge progress with the vaccine. Yeah. There's a huge amount of effort that's been positive, but we are at risk undoing that work and letting in uh, mutated versions of the virus, both from those countries that have had them identified, but also from countries where the identification capacity doesn't yet exist. Right. So there could be additional uh, mutations entering our country and that's why having a comprehensive quarantine seems to be not only the prudent thing to do but it's something that if we listen to the language of ministers should have already have happened all but right it well, isn't. and well, that's let me, why let people me... find it frustrating all right so you, you, there are some exceptions uh, you, you say under your policy but let me just put this scenario to you um, Luke because under Labour proposals if someone living in
in Northern Ireland, for example, wanted to attend a funeral in the Republic of Ireland, when they came back, your plans would mean that that person would have to quarantine in a hotel at their own cost. And it's estimated to be around £1,500 per person, let's say, for well, for the, the duration of the quarantine. Is that correct? Uh, forgive me, because I don't know the finer details of, of uh, how that would work across the Northern Ireland border. And I think Northern Ireland is is a is a clear uh, uh, exception. All right, we'll say where, they're coming from uh, somewhere else. It don't, uh, it, don't worry too much about that. But but just what would happen to them and what they would have to incur in terms of cost. You're saying that anybody that would ha go and visit somebody outside of the UK and then came back into the country, and let's say it was for a funeral, death in the family, they would have to stump up one thousand five hundred pounds worth of costs in order to stay in a hotel under your policy? Well, what we're saying is uh, people shouldn't be uh, leaving the country and returning because right. that risks the uh, increase of uh, the virus spreading. Uh, where there is people travel, where there are people traveling across international borders, it's right that there's a quarantine put in place and it's right that those people uh, obey that quarantine at the moment and that there's proper uh, 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 checking because we don't have that system at the moment. 98% of people aren't being checked whether they're self-quarantining at the moment when entering the country according to those latest stats and that is really worrying. So the proposal that we're putting forward that I think enjoys widespread public support is that people should quarantine in a, in a hotel. Those hotel spaces are largely empty at the moment. As someone who used to work in the travel industry for the Association of British Travel Agents, believe me, there's an awful lot of travel agents at the moment that could assist the government in booking hotel rooms if they wanted to gain that help. But look, it's too slow. That's the fundamental problem here. All right, There's there so is, much progress, so much uh, effort been made, but we're risking it by allowing people to enter the country without those restrictions properly being in place. But Luke, though, there, this, this policy in delivering it may not actually also be straightforward. Can I just ask again what Joe said? I mean, and this is a point of principle. If somebody wanted to go to the funeral of a loved one in another country, and then you were saying they had to quarantine when they came back, would Labour expect them to stump up the costs of staying in a hotel for a quarantine period because they wanted to go to the funeral of a loved one in another country? Well, I think that there is an enormous number of difficult decisions that people have to take at, at, at this time. What we're suggesting is that for people that are entering uh, the UK, coming back into the UK or coming here for the first time, that they should quarantine and there will who be... Who should bear the cost? Because this is what, you know, th th this is not a straightforward thing. You sound straightforward to call for it, but there are, as you say, many difficult decisions. So, you know, on point of principle, if somebody has to travel for that kind of compassionate reason, should they have to bear the cost? Because this is one of the difficult decisions to make. Well, it certainly is. And, and there, there are no easy answers to this, I'm afraid. Um, I, I would love to be able to provide that reassurance, but these are difficult decisions that need to be taken here. And that's why that's why it is really hard. You know, as, as someone who's lost loved ones during the during the crisis, you know, there there are decisions that are about you know, attending funerals uh, and paying last respects that are deeply difficult and personal decisions to make. But at this very moment, the increase uh, or the, the, the numbers of people traveling internationally are risking a spread of a mutated version of the virus that's mm. putting the huge efforts of the vaccination program at risk so there will be some really difficult circumstances of course there will All right. and i'm not denying that that won't be the case but i think this on the whole is something that we absolutely need to get on top of the virus and to uh, really maximize the benefits of that vaccination program that is at the moment going so well but needs to continue going well and that's why we need to control any imports of, of mutated uh, versions of the virus from abroad right then we hear from the prime minister and other ministers um who can keep saying that we have one of the toughest border regimes in the world. Um, it's not true that really, is it? Well, I think you've only just seen, for example, that Germany have uh, brought in a testing requirement for, for UK travellers on yeah. the 31st, uh, 21st of... But compared uh, to New Zealand, uh, Australia, China, Japan, well, South and, Korea, Vietnam, Malaysia, it's not the toughest regime or even one of the toughest. Well, Canada only brought in their pre-departure testing on the 7th of January. If I could just reiterate for viewers, we have got direct postcode testing for these particular uh, variants. We're going Once door to here. door to support people. We've also done 100% of spot checks of all passengers entering the UK. PHE have been contacting 1,500 people a day. We've done 3,000 notice of, in, of intent in people uh, who may be fined for not uh, completing that passenger locator firm. 
term form. As you heard, the Home Secretary says there's more people, uh, police at uh, the airports reminding people about that quarantine, the fact that they must do that 72 hours uh, test, an All approved right. one before they travel, Mims, and that you frankly cannot go willy nilly. And as you heard from no, Luke, we know that, people are having have to make very it. difficult decisions. All right. And I think it's important for people to know that we're not expecting people just to be going up and down the land for no apparent reason. All it's right, got I'm going to be break very in. clear. I'm why. going to break in because we don't have that much time um, and we understand the policy as you've explained it. Now we're going to go to fact check Joel because Boris Johnson accused Keir Starmer of repeatedly advocating staying in the European Medicines a Agency, which Keir Starmer said he hadn't done. Joel, what's the truth? Hi, Joe. Um, as you say, there was this dispute about whether or not Keir Starmer has uh, called for the UK to remain in the European Medicines Agency, uh, which is an EU body. I've um, found a couple of quotes from January 2017 where he uh, seems to be saying exactly that, that we should stay in the European Medicines Agency. These are both from the House of, Commun House of Commons. Uh, so he said, um, why would we want to be outside the European Medicines Agency, which ensures ensures that all uh, medicines in the EU market are safe and effective. And again, he said the European Medicines Agency is one of the bits of the EU that we should be seeking to retain, not throw away. So uh, it seems that Keir Starmer uh, did uh, call for the UK to remain in the European Medicines Agency mm. after Brexit. But Boris Johnson was bringing this up to make a political point. And he, he said um, at PMQs that if we had uh, done what Keir Starmer had, uh, had called for, then we would still be in the starting block blocks in terms of our vaccine rollout and the, the idea there is that we would have had to wait for the European Medicines Agency to authorise our vaccines but that point isn't right because EU law does allow countries that are in the um, European Medicines Agency to grant temporary authorization for their vaccines. And remember that until uh, uh, the end of last year, we were in the Brexit transition period, so we were still following EU laws. And um, this point was actually made by the um, MHRA, the, the UK uh, medicines regulator, in, uh, in a statement last November. They said that if a suitable COVID-19 vaccine candidate um, becomes available uh, before the end of the Brexit transition period. EU legislation allows for temporary authorization of supply in the UK based on uh, public health need. Okay. So I think that Keir Starmer was wrong to say that um, the UK should not, um, was wrong to say that it never called for the UK to stay in the EMA, but Boris Johnson was also wrong to say that that would have left our vaccine program in the starting blocks. Right, very diplomatic there. We'll end uh, that discussion. I think it's cleared it up. Um, Luke, I just want to refer, you've got the union flag there behind you. You obviously don't have a problem with patriotism. Um, does the Labour Party? No, uh, the Labour Party uh, is proud uh, of, of our country. And it's the, uh, I've got the white ensign behind me as a proud uh, MP for Devonport, the country's largest naval base, and of course the Devon flag as well. And I think we should be unafraid of saying that we're proud of our country. Indeed, the Labour leaders throughout, throughout our entire party's history have, have done that. And what we need to make sure beyond that is that we're not just talking about a, a piece of cloth. We're talking about the values that makes Britain strong. And at the moment, we can see those values are on show in terms of the resilience, the, the fortitude, the huge uh, expression of support for yeah. our National Health Service, that service. And that, for me, needs to go with it. It's not just a flag. It's not just a piece of cloth. It's the values that make Britain so great. And that is why we need to support that but as someone who's proud to be English as well I know your viewers will be uh, having lots of different identities I, I'm personally in favour of of more flags that reflect the fact that I can both be proud to be from Plymouth from Devon from England from Britain and proud uh, to be part of a bigger European family all at the same time and just because I have a love of one doesn't mean that excludes me having a love of another and that I think is the message that we've got to get across all right well, Luke, proud uh, of your country is, is something to be proud of uh, right well Luke has um, explained and talked about all of that um, uh, very passionately Passionately, but in terms of the Labour Party as a whole, we heard the Prime Minister saying that the problem with Keir Starmer is he sits on the fence. Um, we have had uh, this strategy document revealed, the results of it, in a national newspaper saying people don't know what Keir Starmer stands for. Is that beginning to have a problem for Keir Starmer? I think that there is a growing...